extra metallic flakes. Nice. Hello fellow Hydras of the Blue and welcome to my channel and also welcome to another episode of Heavy Conscious Marines, a series where I try to paint a space marine to the highest level possible using just contrast paints and highlights. And in this episode you are going to see me paint one of my favorite color schemes for the Chaos Marines, the Iron Warriors. So let's get cracking. As you can see, we are starting from a base coat of lead belcher, a spray, and my first step is going to be to highlight all the metal panel armor. For this I'm going to use iron breaker and I'm going to make a kind of a heavy glaze with this. You can see how thin I have it here. And for example here I'm going to highlight all the top of each panel. Like so, I'm moving my brush from the bottom up to the top, just like this. This will be a very subtle effect, but it will be there. You can feather out the transition from one metal color to the other, if you wish. With that highlight done, I'm going to take Iron Warriors and I'm going to shade down all the areas that I want to be steel but are not part of the armor. For example, the chain mail here. And I'm just going to run this Iron Warriors in the recesses and towards the parts where this meets the main armor, also in the chains. Treating this like a rich shade, really. It's not a full layer, I want to leave some of the lead belcher showing, but I want this to be really, really dark. While those metallic coats dry, and they really need to be very dry, I'm going to take Mechanical Standard Grey, and I'm going to paint all the parts that I want to be black. In my case, that's just that shoulder pad there. And also while I'm waiting for the metallic coats to fully dry, I'm going to take Quarks White and paint all the rubber ridges on his armor. Pick up this, all the tubes, ridges and all this kind of rigid stuff. With those base coats out of the way, and my metallics now fully dry, I'm going to wash all the armor. For this I'm going to use a mix of one part Black Templar and three parts Contrast Medium. And I will apply this over all the panels of the armor that I want to be steel. As always with Contrast Paints, oh, and I will also apply this over his chainmail and other steel details. As I was saying, so with, with contrast paints, apply and then you have to you have to make sure it's not pulling anywhere where you don't want it. And if it is, absorb any excess. Sample's a bit too much in that crack. While the black temper wash dries on all the armor, I'm going to apply Grief Charger Grey over all the joints and rubber tubes. This will serve as a pre-shade for a later step and it will give all the joints a cool touch that will look really well with all the brown tones that we'll add later to the armor. With the Grief Charger Grey dry, I'm going to 
apply a coat of black tempera over those details. And I will also apply black tempera over the grey shoulder pad. With our wash of black temper now completely dry, I'm going to start highlighting all the steel armor. For this I'm going to go back to Iron Breaker and I'm going to again make the same glaze. You can see how thin that is there. And I'm going to apply this glaze in the same motion as I did before, starting from the bottom of the panels moving to the top. This is super super thin, so it will probably take at least three coats to go on and and have the desired effect, but persevere because it's well worth it. Once the panel is dry, you can apply a second coat and you can start seeing how this is, is going. For the panels that had edges, I'm going to take this and do a hard edge highlight here. as well as applying that same glaze. For our steel armor parts are now highlighted back to Iron Breaker and they are looking shiny and nice. And now I'm going to take Wildwood and I'm going to do a couple of things with it. First of all, I'm going to do a richer shade on all our metallic, on all our steel parts. I would just run a very thin line of this, defining all the panels and any rivets, just like that there. And I'm also going to thin this down into a glaze consistency using contrast medium. You can check the consistency there, you can see it's very, very thin. And I'm going to glaze all the panels from the middle down with this. Like that. Creating a warm tone to the lower sections. Once the first layer dries, I will apply a second and maybe a third. I just want to have a very dark brown tone in the lower sections of all the metallic panels. Our glazes of wildwood are now done and you can see how much that does to the overall feel of the model and then I'm going to add a bit more weathering. This time I'm using fire layer flesh and I will use this thin down a bit with water, not too much. You can kind of see what consistency I have there. And well, I will do some drips with this on the larger, flatter panels, like so. Kind of a grease oxide stains. Not a lot, just a tiny, tiny bit of weathering with this. You can see I'm, very, I'm being very subtle with this but that's key to this. You can really easily overdo weathering and we don't want that. And finally, I'm going to etch highlight all the steel panels. Not these ones that are resets, just where there are some etches. I'm using Iron Breaker for this. I'm just going to add 
that edge highlight back mostly to the parts where it's missed due to the weathering or places where you went a bit too far with it and also you can highlight the chain mail here This is especially important on his face here at the bottom where the wild wood and fire slayer flesh mostly hide it all the edge highlighting there. And finally I'm going to take Stompo Silver and going to do the final highlight on the metal on the steel armor. It will be just very small dots of highlight, especially around the face, because you want to make that a focal point. So I'm going to make that a bit brighter than the rest. But also on any edges, I'm just going to pick up corners and so on with this. As you can see, I have base coated all the areas that I want to be non-metallic with Corax White, but first of all I'm going to finish off the rubber ridges and tubes on his armor, and for this I'm going to start highlighting them using Fenrisian Grey. Just carefully picking up all the ridges with this. And now to finish off all the tubes and rubber rigid parts, I'm going to do a final highlight using Rothul and Grey. And I will just do a small dot in the middle of our previous Fenrisian Grey highlight. As always, I try to keep these dots aligned so they make kind of a shine effect. With all the rubber and rooted tubes now done, it's time to finish off all the panels on the armor and the only the only ones left are the ones that will have black and yellow stripes and for this as I said before these are now base coated with Corax white and going to apply a layer of Nas direct yellow over them. As always I apply a thick coat and then go and absorb any excesses. When I'm waiting for the Nas direct yellow to dry, I'm going to base coat using a skeleton horde, any horns that he might have on his armor, like this one but also these strips of leather that are not the main holster and run over it. And again, while all my contrast layers dry, I'm going to take Flesh Tears Red and I'm going to apply this over any tubes, flat tubes like this one and like that one there and also over his eyes. I will apply it on his eyes 
and I will try to absorb some of it from the front of the eye, like that. The Nasdaq yellow is now dry and I'm going to paint the black stripes over the yellow bits of the armor. And for this I'm going to start with Mechanical Standard Grey. And I will make a very thin line, my first one, and then a second one parallel to that. When I'm happy, I'm going to fill in this with Mechanical Standard Grey. Just like that. And I will try to keep my lines spaced constantly. Just try to make lines going from the top to the bottom that makes it easier to keep them straight. While you have all your lines painted with Mechanical Standard Grey, I'm going to take Black Templar and paint just over those lines. I'm moving my brush from the top to the bottom, so more Black Templar deposits there. Once all the black lines are now painted with Black Templar, I'm going to take a one-to-one -one mix of Avalon Sunset and Ariel Yellow, and I will use this to weather out the black lines. So for example, I will do... I will chip the... like chipping the edges of those black lines with this. You can also use this mix to correct any mistakes that you have made during the Black Templar stage. Once all the chipping is done, I'm going to take again Fire Slayer Flesh and I'm going to thin it down to a glaze consistency. And I'm going to apply shading on the yellow bits towards the bottom of each strip. Don't forget to also catch any of the weathering with this. Now to finish off all the yellow details, I'm going to highlight all the stripes using Flash Gits Yellow and thin it down to a glaze consistency. It's not very thick, it's quite thin. And I'm going to I'm going to apply a highlight towards the top of each stripe. With the yellow now done, I'm going to paint all the black details. For this I'm going to edge highlight them with Thunderhawk Blue. So here on the stripes I'm going to do an edge highlight along the top edge. Same goes for the stripes here. but also this shoulder pad here. With that highlight done, I'm going to now take Fenritian Grey and I'm going to do 
a thinner edge highlight on the very upper parts of each panel. So that will pick up this bit here. And for example, this bit here. For the final highlight on the black details, I'm going to take Kulthu and Grey, and I will just do a very small dot in the corners of the panels. So this will be here and here just at the top. Same goes for here, just very small dot there, and maybe here. With the highlights on the black done, I now think I want one more highlight on the yellow just to continue that edge highlight. So I'm going to take Dawn Yellow and I'm going to do a very small edge highlight just to keep it everything consistent. With all the armor now painted except for the trim, I'm going to base coat with Wildwood all the rest of the leather details. In this case is the holster for the pistol. And also these leather straps that make his belt. Also, while I have my wall wood out, I'm going to reset shade or panel line this lighter strips with this, just a very thin line to make them more visible. With all that done, I'm now going to move into highlighting all the rest of the details before finishing with the trim. And the first one will be the easiest, the white leather stripes that he has here. So I'm just taking pure white and I'm just going to do an edge highlight with this. And I'm going to highlight all the leather and for this I'm going to use a one-to-one -one mix of Angor Flesh and Gorthor Brown. And I will do a thick edge highlight with this mix. And on top of that I'm also going to create a bit of weathering by making some slashes and cuts on the leather. next highlight on the leather I'm going to use Angor Flesh and I will do a very thin edge highlight this time as thin as I can make it I will also accentuate some of the scratches here and there. And for the final highlights on the leather, I'm going to use Flayed One Flesh. And I will just pick up the very corners. Probably the biggest scratches like random dots on the border. With all the white and leather out of the way, I'm going to move into the red details. And for this, I'm going to start highlighting them using wild rather red. This will include, of course, all the smooth cables like that one, but also his eye lenses. And for this, I'm going to do 
a highlight towards the front of the eye. For the next highlight on the red details, I'm going to take Fire Dragon Bright and I'm going to do in the cables a smaller edge highlight, concentrating it towards the extremes of each cable. And on the eye lenses, I'm going to do a smaller highlight towards the front. I will also try to pick up just the bottom of the eye. And finally, I'm going to take Flask It's Yellow and I'm going to do a very small dot of this in the very corners of each cable and also in the very front of the eye. And finally, just for the eyes, I'm going to take white and I'm going to do a very small dot of this just in the back of the eye. With all those details done, there's just one thing left to paint, and that is his trim. And I'm going to base coat it using red feature armor. Dream now base coated with red witch armor. I'm going to wash it, and for this, I'm going to use a mix of one part fire slayer flesh and two parts contrast medium. I'm using fire slayer flesh to maintain consistency across our model because I've used it to shade almost everything in one way or another and that helps to bring cohesion to a paint job. Our wash with fire slayer flesh is now dry and I'm going to add a bit more shading and continuing with the theme created all around the model, I'm going to use wildwood and then again thinning it down with contrast medium to this sort of consistency you can see here. And I'm going to apply this on all the rivets like that and also any panel lines and anywhere where you want to create a bit more of sh shading. For example here on the edges. And now, for the last step on our model, I'm going to take Stormhole Silver and I'm going to do a final edge highlight on the gold details. I'm just going to pick up all the edges very carefully with my brush. Also picking up any rivets. And with that last step done, the base painted and all the rest of the parts of the model glued together, our Iron Warrior is finished. And this one was really, really good fun. I always have good fun painting models that have a lot of metallic armor because just adding a couple of, of different tones, you can really get some real nice effect. So guys, as always, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Do you like my videos and want to help me make them? Well, there are several ways you can do that. 
You can follow me on social media, you have the links to all my social media in the description below. You can also check all my affiliate links in the pinned comment of this video. Use those links in your next hobby purchase and help me, without any additional cost to you. I also have merch that you can see just below this video or in the shop tab of my channel. But most importantly, there is Patreon and channel members. You have the link to my Patreon in the description below and in the pinned comment of the video. Or if you prefer, you can just click the join button just below this video. Patreon and channel members help me do all the cool projects that I want to make and help me improve the quality of my videos. Don't be afraid, no content will ever be hidden behind a paywall, but it's a nice way to help me and you will get something back for your generosity, said guys. Thank you very much for watching and a special thank you to Daniel Figueiredo, Ben Morin, Victor Domen, Michael Boye, Christoph Moret, Joshua Bohannon, Ryan Mann, Beldrain, Javi Mota, Kevin Sulas, Kieran Omurthai, Leonard Lindemann, Jonathan Ekelum, Dr. V, G-Force, Elric Ketch, Sasha Pack, Yeti Butler, Manuel Vilela, Josh Simpson, Dominic Trevizo, Richard Kuyakowski, Brent Sillinger, Mark Jarvis, Gareth Smith, Vilkas War, Matteo de Rienzo, Aaron Dell, Natius Maximus, and Samuel for being the coolest persons in the planet. Be like these fine folks, join my Patreon and take control.